Oh, I'm glad you managed to just make it to the sofa in time, Isabel. Your screen looks sparkly clean there. <laughs> have yeah, you just been cleaning been it by polishing. any chance? Yeah, I have, actually. I was on my hands and knees. I'm not joking, because my arm really aches. It's hard oh, work. Dear. Yeah. I stopped doing that, actually. Well, well, when it comes to cleaning your tech and your plasmas and things, we know, Gemma Morris, as we look through Swipe, that kids do not keep their tech clean. It's covered with fingerprints and all the rest of it, um, which is always That's nice to see. It be, it's though. nice to see, I think. <laughs> but what is there? What's about for kids at the minute to really help them, to make them the real whiz kids of the future? Well, whiz kids of the future, yeah, they certainly will be. I mean, this might just be standard, though, mainstream, that children will learn to code. And this week on Swipe, we went to an event called BET, BET 15. It's a massive education event where you've got loads of new technology. And some of the stuff we saw was, was really quite amazing. It's come a long way since I was at school learning about floppy disks and opening up <laughs> spreadsheets. Um, yeah. Take a look at some of the stuff we saw. So let's start with the fuse. Now, this is a robotic arm. Now, what you can see here are children creating the code to move the robot's arm. Wow. So they're writing code. And you know that Britain has a shortfall of coders, and it really is a skill for the future. These children are probably going to end up doing careers that don't even exist yet. Mm -hmm. So right now, they're using little, it, it's called Fuse, but actually Fuse is the name of the box where a little Raspberry Pi, a tiny little credit card sized computer sits. They create the code, so they're learning to code, to move the arm of, of the robot. And they can, they can be moving all kinds of things. So it's a really simple way of, of getting them into coding. And obviously yeah. teachers are being trained to teach children to code and then pass on that skill and keep well, it going. Well, to, co to see... code and then see it do yes, something. Yes, I was going to say, when you see the end result, it does yeah. make coding it's exciting, doesn't it? I would have loved to play with a robot when I was yeah. at school. Yeah, I'd love I mean... to do it now. Frankly, well, there are coding academies for adults. Yeah. We, can, we can talk about that later. But also, augmented reality, that was quite a key theme at BET this year. Yeah. Um, something called a wise floor, which actually had a go on it. If you watch Swipe tonight, you'll see these children teaching me how to have a go on this, what feels like a massive iPad on the floor, but it's it's touch responsive. So you can see the little girl there, she's selecting an image. Oh, the balloon game. I played the balloon game. You see that tonight in Swipe. They're learning games, but the whole motivation behind this piece of virtual reality or augmented reality technology is to actually get kids moving. Because the problem is, with so much advanced technology, it's fantastic that they're sitting there playing with their iPads or making them a bit grubby, like you said. But this actually gets kids moving. Yeah. So it's a bit more active. And, th and that, I mean, I said it's like an iPad on the floor. It is, but it's projected. It's not actually a screen, but it's no. augmented That's reality. Great. But is that Brilliant. something you could have at home? Well, I suppose if you had the money to get one in your living room, <laughs> that'd be great, wouldn't it? Um, but at the moment, these are, you know, for school-aged children in schools, a, another way of learning. And we also had a look at something called imaginality. Sounds good. This, this is also a play on the whole augmented reality theme. Uh... This is more of a 3D virtual reality spin on building things. So here you can see the girl is using these little paddles. Now you can assign things to these paddles and then you end up bringing virtual objects to life. So you're overlaying information on real life. All right. We, I don't know if we've... We haven't, got, you, we, haven't got time, we haven't got time to, to run the grab, but we know Bob oh, Geldof popped well, yeah. in, didn't we? So who knew Bob Geldof co-owns a company which deals with software behind parental communication systems? So we ended up bumping into Bob Geldof, and we had a good chat with him, and we haven't got time to see that now, but tune in tonight, swipe, 9.35 on Sky News, tomorrow, 2.35, Sunday, 8.35 p.m. See what he said, and he even showed us his handset, his mobile handset. Oh, fantastic. If you can oh, guess the year, tweet me, at Sky Gemma. Brilliant. You've yeah, got to see it. it. Tune into that a little bit later on. Let's um, get back to modern day, though. Yeah, modern In fact, day right technology. now, what's happening weather-wise? Yeah, that is all amazing. It's amazing stuff. Quite scary, really, how things are changing. Um,